Thanks very much. Well, I'm sorry to interrupt your moment of aesthetic enjoyment of a great work of European art, which will go down into history as uh, perhaps one of many turning points in this struggle against Brexit. Well, you've heard today very eloquently many, many excellent reasons why Brexit must be stopped, why the United Kingdom should remain in the EU and remain in the EU forever. There isn't one good reason, not one. Nobody has given us a reason why we should leave. Now, I disagree with one little thing which has been said so far today, and that is the references to the 48%. We are much, much more than 48%. It was just the vote on the day. Just the vote on the day. And in fact, it's of the first importance to remember that that franchise that was given for the referendum was a restricted franchise. You've heard from the young today, you've heard from our fellow EU citizens who live in the UK today, they were denied a vote. That franchise was gerrymandered. And only 37% of the people who were given the vote voted to leave. Only 37%. So only about a quarter of the population of these islands wants to leave the EU, went out and voted to say so. Maybe there were others who stayed at home and who also wanted to leave too and didn't care about it. But I'm pretty damn sure that the majority of us in these islands wants to stay as part of the EU. So what's happening today, when people come out and march and wave their flags and stand up as you're standing up today, it's sending a very, very clear message. It's pretty extraordinary, isn't it? It's more than a year since the referendum. And we are still fighting. We are still opposing it. We are still saying we want to stay in. And in particular, we're saying we're never going to give up. Never going to give up. It's tremendously important to think this. If, if, and it's a very big if, any sort of fudged semi kind of Brexit happens in a couple of years' time, on the very day that that happens, begins the fight to get back into Europe and to get back our rights and to make us part of Europe forever. But you know, I'm pretty confident, I really am pretty confident that Brexit is not going to happen. I think we're going to stop it. And there are lots of reasons why I think we're going to stop it. One of those reasons is right here now. It's the determination and the passion being shown here, right here in Grosvenor Square in Manchester today. Absolutely marvellous. The fact that there is this determination by itself says there is no giving up. But also, you know, behind the scenes, there are lots and lots of initiatives developing, lots of things happening, more legal challenges coming up, and some of them have been very carefully worked out and have been very carefully worked through over the months this year and last year getting ready to take a challenge to our government. And I'm going to just tell you about one of them. There are a number of them. You heard from Jolyon earlier. He's doing something very soon, which is going to be quite a shocker. I want to tell you about something else. Think of this. You remember that Gina Miller, woman of tremendous courage, give her a big cheer. Gina Miller took the government to court and went all the way up to the Supreme Court. The courts of our country had to remind our government that Parliament is sovereign and Parliament has a duty and Parliament is meant to discuss these matters and take a decision. So what happened? The government drafted a very short little bill empowering a notification of Article 50. Do you remember that? I invite you to go on to the internet and read the bill. It's not very long, it's not very eloquent, it doesn't rhyme, but it does say that the government has the power to notify the EU. But what it doesn't say is that Parliament accepts the outcome of the referendum. At no point since the 23rd of June last year has our Parliament voted to leave the EU. There has been no proposition put before Parliament and voted on. It's a most extraordinary fact, a gaping lacuna, a gap, a black hole in the middle of everything that has happened since the 23rd of June. And do you know what? What happened was, that vote was such a surprise, okay, 51.9% of votes cast on the day were for leave, 37% of the total electorate. By the way, in no constitutional order could that possibly 
count as a mandate for a major change in a nation's direction. Absolutely no constitution. But, but the effect of the vote was if somebody had thrown a firecracker into the middle of a bunch of pigeons. The pigeons in question being the great majority of our MPs. They all flew off in a, in a million different directions thinking that it was all over. They never stopped once. There's never been a discussion in Parliament saying, OK, hang on, what did that vote actually mean? Let's learn some lessons from it, certainly, because there are some important lessons to learn from it. But does it actually mean that the country has voted to leave the EU? No. Does it mean that Britain has voted to leave the EU? No. It doesn't mean that at all. It means that a minority of people here are fed up and worried feeling marginalized, many of them have got genuine concerns, but they are part of our country and the greater part of our country is committed to Europe. So, we are going to challenge them on that. There are going to be lots of other challenges to government on that and just so long as those challenges are going on and just so long as we all of us come out on a cool, lovely autumn day like this in Manchester and other cities around the country, we'll show them our determination that we are going to stop Brexit. And as I say, as I say, if we don't, if we don't, but I think we will, if we don't, we're not going to give up even then. The future of the UK is in the EU, EU. and why? Because in addition to being British, in addition to being English or Scots or Welsh or Northern Irish, we're all of us Europeans and want to stay so. Thank you.